Okay, Job, the book of Job, chapters 4, 5, and 6. And by the way, if, um, like if I say a word and then I say what the meaning is for that word, please don't be offensive. I don't think you don't know. It's just, you know, I read from the King James Version and I don't want to assume that, you know, every, you know, there's some words in there that some people might not be familiar with if they don't read the King James Version. So anyways, so I might do that. But Okay, chapter 4. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, If we say to commune with you, will you be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have held him that was falling, and you have strengthened the feeble knees. But now it has come upon you, and you faint. It touches you, and you're troubled. Is not this your fear, your confidence, your hope, and, your, and the uprightness of your ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? This is very important stuff right here to know and understand. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Stay tuned for the whole book of Job, please. If you've never heard the book of Job before, especially. A lot of meaning in this book, especially in a Christian's life. By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perishes for lack of prey and the stout lion whelps are scattered abroad. Now a thing was secretly brought to me and my ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me in trembling which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Does not their excellency, which is in them, go away? They die even without wisdom. Chapter 5. Call now if there be any that will answer you, and to which of the saints will you turn? For wrath kills the foolish man, and envy slays the silly one. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate, neither is there any to deliver them. Whose harvest the hungry eats up and takes it even out of the thorns, and the robber swallows up their substance. Although affliction comes not forth of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which does great things, and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who gives, no, gives rain upon the earth, and sends waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappoints the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saves the poor from the sword, from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor has hope, and iniquity stops her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects, therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. For he makes sore and binds up, he wounds and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven 
there shall no evil touch you. In Famine he shall redeem you from death, and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shall you be afraid of destruction when it comes. At destruction in Famine you shall laugh, neither shall you be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For you shall be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. And you shall know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and you shall visit thy habitation shall not sin. You shall know also that thy seed shall be great, and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. You shall come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn comes in his season. Lo, this we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. Chapter 6 But Job answered and said, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed, and my calamity laid in the balances together. For now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, therefore my words are swallowed up. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. The poison whereof drinks up my spirit, the tears of God do set themselves in array against me. Does a wild ass bray when he has grass, or, or low the ox over his fodder? Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for, even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. Then should I yet have comfort. Yes, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me, and is wisdom driven quite from me? To him that is afflicted, pity should be showed from his friend. But he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook, and as a stream of brooks they pass away, which are blackish by reason of the ice, and wherein the snow is hid. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their place. The paths of their way are turned aside. They go to nothing and perish. The troops of Tima looked. The companies of Sheba waited for them. They were confounded because they had hoped. They came there and were ashamed. For now you are no thing. See, you see my casting down and are afraid. Did I say bring unto me or give a reward for me of your substance? Or deliver me from the enemy's hand, or redeem me from the hand of the mighty? Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words, but what does your arguing, arguing reprove? Do you imagine to reprove words, and the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as wind? Yea, you overwhelm the fatherless, and you dig a pit for your friend. Now... Therefore be content. Look upon me, for it's evident unto you, if I lie. Return, I pray you, let it not be iniquity. Yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? Okay, stay tuned for chapters 7, 8, and 9.